Your eyebrow went funny. <laughs> You need to be able to see your eyes, you need to be in focus, you need to have a blank background and you need good sound. And that's kind of it. Um, you probably need to have your eye line as close as camera to possible, you know, kind of like that. And whoever's reading opposite you, that's always a bit of an issue because if they're terrible, they're terrible and they bring you down. So I guess it's get another actor that you trust to read opposite you if you don't have a casting director. I love watching things with people in a room because it completely changes your perspective. If you're watching it yourself on your own for hours, you're completely obsessed with the tiny thing you did and often it's much slower. Uh, you know, when you're watching it with a group of people, you realize how slow you actually are and that, you know, people talk faster than you usually do when you're auditioning. So, um, just basic, basic things like that. The more eyes you have watching the tape with you, I think you start to feel it uh, from your audience. So whether that's your family or friends or other actors or whatever in a group situation, I think that can help a lot. I think the biggest problem with auditions is one note. And the scene might require just one note, and that's fine, but if you get two takes, Try and nail the scene in one of the takes, but in the other take, try and show some versatility. Try and go from A to B to C. Um, you know, from masking emotion to, you know, or from sad to happy to something else, because, you know, the scene just could be completely flat and monotone, but you probably won't get the job if you just do it like that. So I would say change, you know, and, and by changing, by forcing yourself into three or four beats of change in the scene, you kind of, trick yourself into being in the in the present in the here and now as opposed to you know you have this idea and this plan and you're executing the plan which is the opposite of how life works you know we're we're alive we're watching we're breathing um so if you you have to trick yourself into that by going change okay either the look this position anything just change is the most important thing for me the best piece of advice I ever heard was actually a 30 second little clip of Brian Cranston saying that um, he spent however many years going for auditions wanting to get the job. And I don't know how he tricked his head or meditated for long enough to say to himself, just do this five minutes and really give the character and the dialogue the respect it deserves and leave the audition going, I fucking did great in the audition and forget about the job. So. How he did that, I don't know, but that's what you need to do. <laughs> so then Danny DeVito said to roll in, you know, in one of our uh, things we had with him here. So, uh, you know, roll in on the floor and, and make yourself memorable. So that can backfire, I think. You have to be careful in that one. <laughs> so when an actor comes in in character, I think it can be risky because it completely depends on the style of director. And if you don't know who you're, who you're facing, you know, I like it to some degree. I don't, I don't like it when they bring in props and stuff because that shit just gets in the way. But, um, but if they come in with an attitude, you know, you go, okay, you're the kind of actor who maybe is a little bit method, maybe has to embody the part, can't just turn on and off. And I would respect that about an actor. But a lot of people, especially if you're a day player or something very easy, quick, you just need to come in and show that you can turn on and do the job. So I think probably the safer bet is that, you know, unless you're going for the lead and you know the director and you know the casting director and they know your quirks. Um, but if they don't, I think you gotta just be completely professional about it and just come in and sit down and read. If you're a day player, I mean, I think if you don't know enough about the character and the scene, I mean, Try your hardest to get the full script, you know? I know that that can be difficult, but really hound your agent, I think. Hound the cast and director as much as you can. Try and do your homework as much as you can. Get the full, you know, try and sneak in somehow, see rushes, talk to the crew. But when you get there, it kind of depends on the level you're at and you'll probably sense it quite quickly. So 
if you have the kind of director who you can go over and ask a direct question to, pick a moment, there's absolutely, like there should be no shame in that. You should demand to some degree communication. You know, you can't be left out on a limb to that degree. But if you have an asshole director, of which there are many I hear, um, you know, I don't know, it's like, do you pick the producer? Do you have a quiet word with the other actors? Definitely makeup and hair can be fantastic, you know, before you go in. Um, you can get a sense of everything. But, you know, all you can do is try your hardest to do your homework, get all the info and, and get that in with the director, you know. And, and you can always couch it by kind of saying, look, I don't want to take up most of your time. And if you just need me to stand there and say the line, I will do that. But, what's, you know, and not like what did my character have for breakfast, but like try and maybe plot out your questions before you, you get into the situation and, and have them memorized, you know, because you might only have five minutes with them. To not act is the hardest thing in the world. To actually just be on camera and exist and breathe is literally the hardest thing you'll ever do. It's weird because uh, it seems so simple, but you're so on view and so vulnerable and so exposed that, you know, every, probably every ounce of your being is, is directed to protection instead of release, you know? So, um, I mean, that's a tricky one, you know? And there are... I suppose tricks you can do or a director can do or an actor can do to get past that. You know, breathing is one of them. So many actors aren't actually breathing when they're on camera. They're not breathing fully. They're not breathing. When they, when they say cut, you see their whole body relax and you see the breath come back into them. So something as simple as breathing is huge and that takes amazing amount of practice. So like put a camera on you, have your friend press record and just sit there for half an hour and look down the lens and breathe. <laughs> Loads of actors send me showreels and they go, what do you, like, this showreel, will this showreel get me an agent? And the showreels are often, you know, they might be a couple of student films, they might be a couple of low budget films, they're possibly badly lit, they're possibly, the showreels are badly edited, or the, the films might be badly edited. So what you really need to do, I think, is have amazing acting on you know, with the blank background, almost like auditions. If I, as a director, if I got a showreel with five scenes that were radically different in the, with the exact same setup, I would be 10 times more interested than if I'm like, oh, so you played daughter number two on, you know, whatever TV show. And um, that just kills you, so. Between jobs, I think the thing you need to do is keep exercising your muscle, you know, cause you, if you're a bodybuilder, you go to the gym, you know, if you're an actor, you need to be seeing plays, you need to be finding new material, you need to be writing if you can. If you, if, if you can't write as in like this polished version of writing, you need to be doing a stream of consciousness, poetry, whatever the fuck, it doesn't matter. But, you know, you, the, the worst thing you can do is sit around and wait for the phone to ring and not only because it's boring, but because the muscle gets lax, the confidence starts to slip. Um, so keeping active is probably the most important thing in the world. You know, that there's a few actors who don't need to do that, but I think nine out of 10 really do. They just need to work hard. It's the same as writing. If you don't write every day, uh, I, was, I wasn't a writer till I started to write every day. I, I can only see that in retrospect. <laughs>